I'm ignoring the island I should be actively working on right now to go build a little side project so I don't have to deal with the crippling guilt of ignoring everything I have to do on this island. And also, Derwin is here, so I don't really want to be here right now. I feel like I'm being chased by some kind of demon due to the fact that he lives here, so I think the best course of action is to kind of evacuate for a little bit so maybe he thinks that I died. Anyway, I'm going to Happy Home Paradise today to build a liminal space. If you for some reason clicked on this video and don't know what a liminal space is, don't worry. It is described by Wikipedia as a sort of transitional space. It's a space that you're only supposed to stay in for a little bit at a time. It feels foreign. However, I think a lot of the liminal space content we see now is based on an eerie factor of nostalgia, something you remember from the past that doesn't quite sit right with you, which is what I'm going to be going with. Here's some pictures of the idea I had right now. I love the idea of nostalgia and childhood, and I also love the idea of creepiness. The back rooms are often kind of described as a liminal space and I want to build that right now and I also just like doing things that I think won't turn out good. I think this will turn out bad. I have ideas, but I'm kind of concerned about my ability to execute them. It's like trying to write down a sentence that's been in my brain for six hours soaking like a piece of meat. I wish Wilbur didn't have to take me. It feels like an invasion of my privacy. Like, I really only want to see this man when I'm doing villager hunts. Otherwise, I'll die from some kind of sepsis. The liminal spaces I'm going for and the liminal spaces you guys will probably be used to seeing are kind of 2000 space. Oh, Ken is here. Hello, Kevin. The 2000s had a lot of aesthetics that kind of read as liminal now, which is great for me because I remember them very clearly and I feel like I have a lot of connections to them. They're very nostalgic for me, so that'll be good. I completely forgot who was there. Like, I literally looked through every single person on that island and I have no idea who I saw. I'm gonna have to decide who to make this liminal space for, which is uncomfortable. I don't like making decisions. I wish one of them would just come up and say they want me to ruin their life, and I would. I don't want to do it without permission, but I do want to do it. It's so upsetting to me that this outfit is not as cute as it should be. Like, I get the whole uniform thing, I understand, but like, can we have different colors of the paradise planning pattern? That's so hard to say. That is a tongue twister. I just feel like this is out of character for me. I feel like if anybody who I recommended this place to came, they would think that I was some kind of statue, a simple mannequin, and I'm not. I'm trying to work here. I'm trying to own a business. I'm trying to deal with inflation, okay? This is serious business. Ken, I kind of want to do Ken. I don't want to do Candy. Actually, Hornsby would be perfect. He gives me that like kind of 2000s vibes. He's flat colored. He's kind of almost a little bit round and soft feeling. He reminds me a lot of the 2000s. I think this would be good. I genuinely thought that said handcuffs. I mean, I'm not gonna judge you, Candy, in that respect, but in every other respect, I will. I had a way cool dream where I met someone from Paradise Planning that looked just like you. That means, uh, I don't know what it means, and I don't know you, so hi there. Since you're here, do you think you could help me? I want a vacation house so I can vacation in it. I'm gonna make you a nightmare. I'm gonna make you a nightmare beyond your comprehension, Hornsby, and you're gonna be trapped there, and you're gonna be, like, walking around in it like it's a revolving door of horrors, and I hope that that's okay with you, because you're the best option for it. I know you look a little concerned. I know that sounds a little bit concerning, but it's really not that bad. I think that this could be a good team. I think you and me, we could make a really good team of horrifying nightmares. Do you think so? Are you down for this? You don't have a choice. I'm sorry. I've got ideas. Hey, if your head's full of ideas, that means I can fill my head with snacks. Schnozzle. Sounds like a slur. Win-win. Win-win. Win-win is right. I think you're gonna lose. I think this is a lose-lose-win situation. Lottie also loses because I'm losing a lot of credibility for the company and we're gonna see a pretty big stock crash. That's fine. Salem will be coming up with the plans for the design this time. Oh, I like it. I don't think anybody's got a big round had more full ideas than yours. You wanna go? You wanna go? Hornsby, you wanna go? You know what? Okay, I'm self-conscious about my head. Can you fix your tone with me? Really, can you fix your tone with me? Because I think that we could go outside right now and we could totally redo this whole thing. We could totally redo this whole thing and you could not say this. You could decide to maybe treat this like a little bit more of a professional time, all right? Even though I'm gonna destroy your life. I think you should be treating me with respect. All right, now the next step is to find a plot of land that works with the design you have in mind. I know that there's a plot of land that kind of looks like it's in a city and that's the one I wanna go with. This one, I want this one. This is perfect. This looks like a 2000s cul-de-sac house, you know? The ones that were in the suburbs that you kind of only went to every once in a while and they had like jello in the fridge. Everybody I ever saw when I was a kid had those little jello fruit things, but not the normal ones. They had like the sugar-free jello and that was concerning to me. You know, that will make you shit your pants. I'm gonna start with a one level home and then we'll see what happens. Cause I know that I never accurately judge these things. I think I think of size as sort of a time continuum. I never see what's gonna go in there. In my brain, you could fit an unlimited amount 
amount of items in one space either that or you could fit two so i have no idea what's gonna happen here see this is perfect this is so suburbs the 2000s were the time of suburbs unfortunately i never liked suburbs or cul-de-sacs i don't want to live in that kind of area oh thank you nat that's very sweet of you to send a butterfly with me i don't need that that's cool i feel like i, I feel bad for keeping him trapped in there i feel like i'm forcing this poor little guy into a prison and he's gonna rot away there and he's gonna come out with 10 tattoos and i'm not ready for that but also if he knows how to get tattoos can you do this i can't afford a tattoo right now and i really want another one am i going insane or is hornsby's like horn gross looking it looks like it has plaque on it okay you know that's concerning a little bit it looks yellow like an old photograph it looks like he's been sitting in some kind of coffee or tea for a couple years can you take him out and like clean him can you scrub him that has me thinking because like the thing is why are dentists always the meanest doctors why are they always the most rat ass doctors of all and i mean this i truly mean this i'm not trying to exaggerate if you go see a dentist they are always going to tell you that you are doing a terrible job of taking care of yourself with doctors they are trained to fix you if you have a problem and so are dentists they're supposed to fix you if you have a problem but dentists are consistently like yeah you look like shit mm -hmm, you look horrible by the way if somebody saw you they would run away and think you were a wild animal bearing the blood of your enemies on your teeth okay you need to start flossing otherwise the chicken factory will take you in and think you're an eggshell and crush you up to be fed to the chickens if you didn't know that chickens will actually eat their own eggshells for calcium I think it's calcium, something like that, and they will eat their own eggs, in fact. It's kind of interesting. It really is an interesting idea. I mean, I guess if you run out of food, it's like, it's not really cannibalism, is it? It's not cannibalism. It is weird. It's not cannibalism, though. There's a very large distinction between weird and cannibalism. You know, there's cannibalism where you actually eat a human alive person, and then there's cannibalism where you just kind of gnaw on somebody a little bit. That's not cannibalism. That's just a weird guy. You can't say chomping on somebody is cannibalism. Is a hickey cannibalism? No, it's not. We're already getting into to the cannibalism stuff very quickly. This has become a theme on the channel and I'm a little bit concerned about it, to be honest with you. I feel like I need to fix that. I feel like I need to no longer talk about cannibalism. Anyway, a lot of the walls I remember from the early 2000s are either like floral or kind of funky patterned. I really like this. I do really like that rose wall. I feel like that would work pretty good. It's interesting because I feel like we could either go like pretty blank. We could either go like with this cloth wall and be completely blank. Or we could go with something that's more segmented and a little bit better looking. We could go with something like this or the blue rose wall. I kind of like this one the best. I feel like it's a little bit more understated, but at the same time, I think it might be a little bit too crowded. See, this is why I said I don't think this is going to work out very well. I enter these builds thinking like, I have a clear image of this in my mind. And then the second I try and put it down, you know, I understand why I don't have faith in myself. Because really, what am I supposed to put the faith in here? This is horrible. This is just, that's rancid. It's not even, it's just how badly bright it is. That is horrifically bright. That is the brightest thing I've ever seen. I feel like I'm forming cataracts on my eyeballs as I look at it. Some of these walls, I'm just truly curious how anybody could ever use them. Like, it's kind of concerning to me that the Animal Crossing designers sat down and were like, yeah, this is the best we can do. This is all we've got, baby. And this feels too white for the early 2000s, you know? Everything in the early 2000s was still a little bit beige from the 90s. I say that like I know. I say that like I'm fully aware of all the design trends that have ever happened. No, I don't know. I google things sometimes and that's all i've got that's really the best i can do for you i'm gonna start with this you know what i'm just gonna start with this blue wall that's what we're gonna do we're gonna start with this and see what happens i really do honestly like this pine board flooring the wooden knot flooring just feels a little too modern for it i wonder when the exact switch was between this kind of like duller style to the brighter y2k and then back to minimalism because i hate the switch to minimalism okay i really do i despise it i watched a video essay on the frutiger arrow aesthetic which is a really cool thing to look into if you want something to look into i'm gonna go with that actually oh that's really good oh i like that is it raining outside at this moment at this time okay interesting right i see anyway the frutiger arrow aesthetic was kind of both a predecessor and a follower to y2k it was based on like futuristic kind of tech a lot of clear stuff but also it was mixed with natural imagery i guess and i love it I love it. It's one of my favorite aesthetics in the whole world. But then they slowly started replacing all that glossy, nice, futuristic looking stuff with flat minimalism. That is so video killed the radio star to me. You cannot just do that. You cannot just destroy an aesthetic like that. You're sick. I feel like all of these sort of liminal spaces are kind of darker. You know, you can't see them fully clearly. You feel like they're a little bit dark. I feel like in order to do that darker aesthetic i kind of need to fix the wallpaper which is making me angry that's not nice i thought that i had this down
I'm gonna go with that actually. I really thought I wasn't gonna go with that, but I'm gonna try and make it work, okay? The best part about the 2.0 update is the fact that I now have a giant boxy TV to put down, so I know where that's going, okay? I'm, I'm fully aware of the TV I'm about to use. Anyway, Frutiger Arrow and Modernism. I despise all of the flat logos and the flat art. It just sucks. I am not a big fan of any kind of brands or whatever trying to make themselves more relatable, but the fact is, is that you made your brand even less identifiable when you just take all of the cool elements out of it. And then the other part is that it just looks dumb. It just doesn't look fun. You know, it doesn't make me want to buy anything. This would be so cute if it wasn't like an extremely modern looking thing. Uh, a good old-fashioned wooden chest is always good, however, the fact is that it's, like, huge. Everything feels huge and large, and that's upsetting to me. You need something that looks like you bought it at a garage sale, because that's the truth of the matter. Everybody was buying their shit at garage sales. That's what we all should have been doing at every single time. Garage sales are one of my favorite things on this earth. I won't lie to you. I love a garage sale. A garage sale is a really deeply beautiful thing to me. If you take me to a garage sale, I'm gonna find something. There's no way I would ever be able to walk out of a garage sale without finding something because the fact of the matter is that I always just want a random trinket. I want something to hold in my hand while I walk around and I will buy something no matter what, especially because it's always like 50 cents. If I can get a trinket, I will be getting a trinket. I will be getting a little item, all right? Trust me on this one. There is no way I can survive without an item. Why is the wallpaper really the thing that's tripping me up here? I didn't think it would be. Anyway, the TV is coming to save my life again. Look at this. Look at this. This is perfect. The VCR TVs are one of my favorite things on this earth. Those big old chunky TVs are fantastic. I know that the quality is just so much better on new TVs. I understand that fully. However, I feel better about that. I do. I feel better about that. I hate the indecision that I have been putting myself through right now. I really do. I despise it, but this is what we have to do. Okay, this is the only way I can have any kind of peace with myself. Oh, that's ugly. That's horrifying, but not ugly in the way that I want. There's a very specific type of ugly that I'm looking for right now, and it's kind of this, but this doesn't work, does it? Well, it kind of does. I kind of like it. I kind of am a fan of that. I might leave that there. My Joy-Cons are so clicky right now and it's bothering the hell out of me anyway. But like, why, why is that the trend? I really want to know, have any of you guys done any kind of research on why the trend is leaning towards minimalism? Because you could say futurism, okay? But we had good futurism. We had a good design for futurism and they just went away with it. They just said, no, I don't think so. We're getting rid of this. Why? Why do you hate me? This actually, the ranch low board actually kind of works. I don't want the white one, but the natural wood one kind of looks a little too weird. I could do the white one maybe. That kind of works actually, I don't mind that. Everything I do is just a test of how much I can deal with not liking something because sometimes I can't deal with things, but sometimes I can let them slide because I'm just tired. The further on in I get into a build, the more I can just kind of let things slide. This rug is kind of looking a little too gaudy. It's kind of feeling a little bit too much. I might get rid of that. Ooh, I kind of like that Pixar lamp moment. I was always kind of scared to the Pixar lamp, but I kind of wanted to be him at the same time. I had a weird fascination with the Pixar lamp, to be honest with you. Whenever I watched, like, Pixar at a friend's house or something, I would stare directly at the Pixar lamp because I just had a fascination with him. I want to know what his story is. Why did I have this fascination with the Pixar lamp? I don't know. I'm really not fully aware at the moment of why this happened. Oh my god. This looks kind of too realistic. <laughs> Uh, I kind of like it, but why is it so textured? It is so textured. The round mat is a little bit off-putting, though. Do you guys not just have a rug? A simple rectangular shag rug? Very simple. A simple request, to be honest with you. More simple than any other simple request you've ever seen. Okay, this is the simplest request, and yet I see nothing. Yet there's nothing here that could help me with my quest. I'm just trying to make something that makes you violently uncomfortable, that's all. Can you help me here? Can I get some help with this? I don't understand. Why am I in turmoil at all times? I'm just gonna go with that rug, maybe. It does kind of feel a little early 2000s. I feel like I had a rug similar to that. Shag rugs were a big thing, and I do miss shag rugs, but they just attracted so much dirt. Do you remember, like, when you would vacuum a shag rug, and, like, the entire lost city of Pompeii would come out of it, and you would breathe it in and feel like you were gonna die of lung cancer. You remember that? I sure do. I feel like that's just a common occurrence though. I feel like everybody has had a shag rug that feels a little bit wrong, that feels like it's been through maybe like 10 people. These are all a little bit too much. <laughs> These are all a little bit too far gone, which is unfortunate because I really like the Nordic sofa for this. What about the simple sofa? Let's give that a try. A very simple sofa. I don't understand Animal Crossing. I never have. 
just to be completely clear, like I promise you, I am not playing this game because I know how to play this game. I don't. I've never understood it in my life. This is completely foreign to me. I will play it for three more years. I will. And I will still not understand it. That's not white. That's ivory. That's It's ivory. Go to hell. Anyway, if you watched my last video all the way to the end, I have been taking care of my cat who recently was diagnosed with diabetes. And the exciting thing about that is that I have been getting zero sleep. And I mean, not one inkling of sleep at this point in time. So I am exhausted. And last night, I had a very, very vivid dream of myself going to like a theme park. I think it was kind of Legoland-ish or something. I'm not 100% sure. And somebody tried to take my hair off of my head and sell it. And I don't know what that was about, but the only thing I remember from that dream that really sticks out to me was the fact that I had for some reason chosen to go into nuclear science. I was a nuclear scientist at that point and they couldn't take my hair, they didn't want my hair anymore because I had fried it off in a nuclear reactor. And the thing about that is like, where does your subconscious come up with ideas for you when you're in the dream? Where do you get those ideas from? Because I don't want to be a nuclear scientist. Certainly not. That's not really something that I'm into. However, it felt real. It really, it really felt real. It felt like that was something I knew how to do. It felt like I had knowledge about this when I woke up, okay? It felt like I could have given a dissertation on some kind of nuclear reactor at that point. And this is concerning to me. I won't lie to you. This is a concerning thought to me. I'm move this out a little bit. That's fine. Okay, whatever. I have not thought about nuclear anything once in the past couple weeks. I have been thinking only about my cat, but the exhaustion apparently brought up a deep-seated need in me to think about an era where I was in some kind of nuclear science field, and I'm concerned. You know, where did, where could that possibly come from? I feel like dreams are such an unexplored sect of science, and that makes me upset. I really want to know what's going on in dreams. I want to know what the evolutionary advantage of dreams are, okay? I really do, because that's a very interesting topic to me. Why why do I live like this? Why am I forced to live like this? I don't understand. I really don't understand why we're dealing with this. I wish there was a VHS. Is there not a VHS I can put anywhere? That is so upsetting. VHSs, I feel like were always more fun to watch than DVDs. VHSs felt like they were special. Felt like you were having a really special time when you were getting a VHS out, you know? Ew. Ew, it's like the minimalist children's toys. That's so upsetting to me. Have you guys seen those where like the rainbows are just like one monotone color? Have you seen that? Those children's toys that are specifically focused on being really monotone? That is so horrifying to me. Why are you forcing your child to be an Instagram aesthetic flat lay purveyor? I don't understand you as a person because children need bright colors. You ever think about like why people always say like, oh, my kid likes the colors of that because they need colors for their development. Human beings need colors, okay? Colors are great. I mean, colorblind does happen and you don't need colors technically but for good development you do want colors you do want colors for your child and it's really upsetting to me it's really deeply upsetting to me that some people are just sitting there and thinking yeah the best thing i could possibly do is give my child a beige room with brush letter font are you insane are you insane what is wrong with you Ooh, a little stereo would be so nice but these are all really big and i don't have a good space for them i don't have a space to put these in that's not nice I really want to put down, I feel like there were always little things that remind you of home. Like, actually, that's a really good idea. Like, an ironing board just kind of being out. I feel like all the liminal space pictures are just kind of a day in the life. Like, they feel like a lived-in home, you know? And, like, an ironing board out while you're watching TV is such a lived-in home feeling thing. Am I trying to, like, excuse my actions again? I might be. You're not allowed to tell me I am if I am, though, okay? Trust me on this. You don't want to know. I want to put some toys on the floor, too. I feel like the childhood aspect of it is really important. Or at least a memory you would have when you are a child, you know? No iPads on the floor or anything. The term iPad kid is so interesting to me because, like, that's a pretty new phenomenon, theoretically, you know, in the span of things. I feel like some people don't know what they're saying saying by iPad kid. I feel like some people are trying to equate iPad kid with like somebody who doesn't care for their child or something. That's not 100% true, but I don't like the whole iPad kid thing. If you are sitting there, you know, not watching what your kid is watching, that is so terrible because YouTube kids is one of my least favorite things on this earth because I don't think that you should ever be letting your child go onto a website that is so poorly regulated because YouTube kids is 
horribly regulated horribly regulated okay there is not one instance where i feel like you could genuinely trust what you're seeing on there trust what your kid is watching because it is consistently used as a platform to post things that children should not be seeing and that's the thing ipad kid having your kid play something on an ipad is not the worst thing in the world and that's what everybody's mad about usually that's not the problem that's not the it's the content they're consuming it's the same thing as letting your kid watch pbs or something if you're giving them good educational content but if if you're like putting your kid out there to just do whatever they want to on YouTube, it is a bad thing when you aren't watching your child. It's not something simple and an easy way to entertain your kid. I don't know why I went on that rant. What is going on with me? Anyway, it's really important that you watch what your kids are doing. And that's also why I'm always kind of sad when kids are watching me, because I don't want them to watch me. You know, I want them to be watching things that they should be watching at their age. And that's why my videos aren't marked for kids, which apparently people don't know is a thing. And the reason why YouTube Kids exists is because when you mark your videos for kids, they show them to kids. Wow, novel concept. Anyway, I do love this though. Let me see if I can put the puzzle on the floor. I want it to look a little bit cluttered. Like I said, that lived in aspect of everything, at least in like my general perception of liminal space, because I feel like, you know, the more lived in and the more realistic it looks, the more it kind of sticks in your brain. I feel like that's kind of where you get a lot of that nostalgia because it looks like it's more lived in than any kind of stock photo or whatever. Cause it's usually a photo of somebody's like real house, you know? It's a real place that people lived in at one point and people had memories in. And I think that's really interesting. Ooh. Ooh, wait, I could put this tape deck down. I feel like I need to find something to put it on top of though, because it just kind of sinks in next to that chair. Let me see if I can find a little end table. You know what the other thing that I've been thinking about lately? <laughs> These videos are just truly me airing out all of the difficulties I have been having during the week because I have too many thoughts. That doesn't match. That is so... That is so... I complain about this every single time and I will continue to do so until somebody fixes this monstrosity. Okay, that still kind of doesn't match. I need to stop. I need to stop thinking at this point. I'm going to be so mad if I just keep thinking about the fact that these don't match. Anyway, I'll put a little pet bed there. How about that? That's cute. That feels weird. The system kitchen is perfect for this. I don't want to do the yellow. Maybe the natural wood. I feel like that would be really good. Yes. I love that kind of, okay, okay, good, 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 great, fantastic. Anyway, I do kind of love in general though that there are people creating kids content that is good. I do love that. I feel like it's a big gap in the market because people aren't really able to find things that work specifically for them because learning styles are all different and I think that's great. But the other thing, I feel like YouTube as a platform since the 2006 era when it came out, obviously things have changed. I'm not saying like, whoa, things have changed. That's crazy, obviously they have. The whole atmosphere around just existing has changed as well because this house was like acceptable to have your kids friends over to you know this house with lived things on the floor was acceptable and stuff you know you felt like you were going into somebody's actual house and i feel like now you are held to a very different standard than you would have been back then and i do think that's because of social media honestly i do think that but also you can't really escape it now it's a part of life now but i think that the more we get into a different era the more we're gonna feel like there is a completely inescapable feeling of you have to be perfect and i've already talked about this in a video essay before but i think looking at it through this lens of looking at old liminal spaces and nostalgia is really interesting i don't know anything i'm saying at any time where are appliances i just want a fridge can i get a fridge please one fridge this is a closet i really truly thought that that was a fridge i don't understand anything i don't understand how fridges work even if i ever have to buy a fridge in my life i'm gonna die i believe this i believe that i don't think i could handle buying a fridge because what's the difference between fridges really really explain to me the difference between a fridge it's a cold box explain it to me oh my god the stickers are so cute that's adorable i never noticed that was a thing before oh my god anyway explain to me the difference between sinks okay you go to lowe's there's 30 different sinks and of course you have different styles or whatever why are some of them more expensive other than materials why what could you possibly do to make a sink more expensive it's the same sink but i feel like that applies even more for fridges because you can't tell me that there's something different inside of the cold box okay it's the same box it's the same thing it's always gonna look like that oh that's so high compared to that oh that's weird i don't like that anyway 
you're always gonna have a fridge, okay? Maybe it lasts a little bit longer because it's more expensive, I don't know. But I have never seen a fridge fully break within like the span of 20 years of having it. Fridges just don't do that. You'll have to repair a fridge. So you, you mean to tell me that Lowe's is not completely just messing with you there, okay? They're saying this is the better fridge. This is the fridge you absolutely need. This is the fridge that is gonna make your life so much easier. You must be joking. You cannot be serious. There is zero possible way that that can be it. That there is some kind of secret fridge component that paying more money or getting a different fridge fixes. You cannot tell me that's the truth. Am I anti-fridge now? Do I have like an anti-fridge stance? I don't know how to feel about that, to be honest with you. I really don't know how to feel about that. But it's like, if anybody's gonna have an anti-fridge stance, why not have it be me? why not have it be me? Because at the very least, fridges should be very simple to buy. Even if they have to have different tiers or whatever of how good a fridge is, a fridge should be simple to purchase. You should be able to go into a store and like see a fridge and think, am I going to get the cheap fridge, the more expensive fridge, or the most expensive fridge? No, they're like, this one has a screen on it. This fridge has a screen. No, no, that should not be what it's like to purchase a fridge. You should not be given the option of having a screen on your fridge. That is completely wrong. A screen fridge is like giving yourself the option to have a screen on your toilet that does nothing. What could you possibly do to fix the temperature? Okay, there's been buttons for that the whole time. There has always been a button to change the temperature inside of your fridge, or at the very least a dial. That's not new. Oh wait, that looks dumb. The spacing of that is so dumb. Oh, I'm gonna fix that. Sorry. Sorry I made you look at that. Sorry I made you gaze at that. I really am. That's That was difficult to look at. I just don't understand. Why are we forced to live a life like this? Why are we forced to live a life where buying a fridge is not simple? I'm not shopping for a fridge or anything, by the way. I have zero plans to purchase a fridge in any capacity anytime soon. This is just something that has been plaguing me, I think. Hornsby, stop watching me. You're making me uncomfortable. This is like impacting me a lot now, I think. I feel like I've just uncovered something. Oh my god, a vacuum. Yes. Little, little vacuum. Wait, why does it stick out like that? No, that's gonna piss me off, actually. No. I'll put it in this corner, okay? Fine. Fine, the vacuum go- no, that looks so dumb. I'm gonna leave it there, okay? You know what? I'm gonna leave it there, and then maybe I'll figure out something to do with it, and I won't forget about it. This was really eye-opening, I think. I feel like I'm a different person now. I, I kind of get what conspiracy theorists feel like at this point, because like, yeah, yeah, you know what? What is up with all of this? That is the only conspiracy theory I will ever believe in. Anyway, we're gonna make a dining area now. Small cafe table. Will the light brown kind of blend in a little- no, that looks stupid. That's not the same light brown, and it's just- it's making me angry. I feel like a corner dining table is a staple. You know, I love a corner dining table. I do. You're never gonna get anything better. I also really like liminal spaces because I feel like it's one of those things that you don't really understand why it feels the way it does. A lot of them are malls, which like I have never been in a mall that has closed down. I think it just feels like it's something you're not supposed to be seeing really. It feels like something that you weren't meant to see. And I think that's always gonna give you a little bit of the creeps. I think that's just how life is. If you see something you're not supposed to see, it's gonna haunt you a little, a little bit. But it's always kind of a comforting haunting. I never feel like it's completely scary, like it's physically scary, but it's never something that feels actively dangerous. It's just off-putting. And I apparently can't get this to look right at all. Is this gonna have something? Something I can use? No. No, that's a garden table also, which is off-putting. Outside furniture should not be inside furniture purely because of the fact that it's been outside. If something's been outside, I can't put it inside. I will just always remember it as being the thing that's outside with all the outside stuff on it. You know, you can't change my mind on that. I remember there used to be these really weird looking rattan chairs that I've seen before. And some people had been moving them inside of their house as like a decor thing. No, no, those are outside chairs. Put them back. Put them back where they came from or so help me God. Those are the outside chairs. They've been in the outside they have the outside dirt on them. Don't bring that inside. You washed it. I don't care. You cannot convince me that there is any reason that you should be bringing the outside chairs. Like, they really do look like the rattan set in Animal Crossing. They did that really well. But I simply, I remember the rattan inside craze, and I hate everybody on this earth for ever participating in it. You ruined your trust. I need to move this. Hmm, that's upsetting. But they can't not have a fridge. <laughs> I don't know who they is. I have like, I have completely created an entire family. You know what? That's fine. It can be cramped. That's fine. All of the houses in the early 2000s were cramped, okay? We need the baby high chair too because I'm just like headcanoning that there's a baby in here. I feel like this should be over here. 
what i don't like this maybe i'll just section it off with some tile rugs i don't know why these are in the rug sections i really wish you could just tile the whole floor and be normal about it i think that might be the right move maybe maybe i'm lying to myself why does it look like this why does it feel wrong i don't understand what did i do to you what did i ever do to you i think it's because i want this to come out here but then i feel like that would look a little weird well, let's try it anyway. You know, you gotta try. You gotta give it a little shot. You gotta give it a good try. I should become a motivational speaker. I shouldn't. Motivational speakers have never ever worked for me. Like, there was not one time where I fell for that. I don't know. It's just never been my thing. Okay, that kind of works. I kind of like it. I'm kind of a fan of that. But now I kind of want to add a partition wall. <laughs> Excuse me moving the ironing board to the middle of the room where the baby's gonna do it. Maybe the baby will. Maybe the baby will do all of the ironing. I wish that was the case. Please don't let your baby near any kind of hot iron. Thanks. This is so conflicting. What if I just moved everything over very slightly? Have you ever thought about that one? I don't know who talked about it, but there was like one post or something that was describing somebody who played a prank on one of their family members by moving things around while they were gone and they thought they were going insane. I think about that every day because I will swear to you half of the time that somebody is doing it, that somebody is moving my shit around when I'm not looking, and I can't prove that to you. And in fact, I don't think it is really happening but the slight idea that it could be it's destroying me inside i'm gonna put one of those little washing machines over here i think i think that would be cute you know i think that would be a little bit adorable a little bit fun and exciting happy home paradise is so good but at the same time i feel like i never reach to play it exactly i feel like i'm never exactly looking to play happy home paradise i feel like it was a fantastic addition and it's so good but it lost its kind of luster after a little while i totally understand why it would but at the same time i feel like like I never exactly got the amount of playtime that I should get from it. I have never had a Happy Home Paradise playthrough where I felt like, oh my god, I haven't played this in ages, you know? I played it a bit when it came out, and I liked it. I liked it a lot. I did a good amount of homes, and then I just didn't touch it, and it wasn't because of burnout. I guess it had just lost whatever was drawing me in in the beginning. I don't know. I kind of don't like this hat thingy there anymore. It's pissing me off. I just have to add two washers, don't I? There's not a washer and a dryer. Maybe if I make it blue, it'll look like a washer and a dryer. Yeah? Yeah, you get what you get what I'm saying? You see what I mean? I'm not Siri turning on. Hmm. Is there something else I can help with? No. So many people are like scared of Siri, and I'm not scared of Siri, but I am tired. You know, I feel like after a while, I'm just tired. I love these little fans. These little fans are always present in those rooms, and I love them. All of the liminal space rooms have a silly little fan in them, and I love it. One thing about me is I'm gonna love a fan, you know? A little cheap looking white fan. I feel like adding the water cooler there is perfect. I love it, I love it. Water cooler water always felt like a delicacy to me when I was younger. I don't know if that's a universal thing, but water cooler water, bottled water, that was the best water you could possibly get. You were never gonna find a better sip of water, a more satisfying sip of water than a delicious, perfect, delightful sip of non-tap water. The one thing with Animal Crossing kitchens is that there's always loose space. There's always like loose space that you just can't use. Because these look stupid, don't they? Oh, that looks dumb. Oh, no. That's horrifying. It just looks like they're sitting there like in a little a little pack. Like they're running through the forest on National Geographic. You know what I mean? I don't even know what I mean. I say that. I say, you know what I mean? I don't- you don't either. You don't need to know. Corner fan, help me. You're all I have right now. See, see, that still looks stupid. What are you supposed to use the cabinets for? All right, riddle me this. This is a room, that's for sure. That's what I can tell you right there. This is certainly a room. You could say anything else you want, that it's bad, you would be right. You can say that it doesn't look good, you would be right. But you can't say that it is not a four-walled room. And that's all I'm looking for at this point. I feel like Hornsby is the child in this scenario, you know? Because there's no way that I could see him as a functioning adult. I just feel like he's one of those characters that can't age up. He's like Ash Ketchum, who apparently they're gonna age up now, so that joke doesn't work anymore, but whatever. I need to find people to pose as his parents, so it doesn't just look like he's alone in this home, you know? Who could be his parents? Who could be his rhinoceros parents? We need at least one rhino, so that we can figure out where the hell the rhino part came from, you know? But the thing is, do I have any other? I don't. Okay, so it's Paulo. Paulo is his father, and, uh... <laughs> Um, he was the result of an affair. His mother was Sylvia, and he was a result of an affair, which Sylvia stuck with Paulo, can you blame her, you know? 
I hate a cheating storyline. I really do. But with Paulo, you know, like, can you blame her? I can't, personally. I think I, I just can't do that. Just to clear up any confusion, no, they're not divorced. You know what else? The only movies, other than one specific one that I saw at the theaters, were all sequels, and I'm really tired of it. I'm really sick and tired of it. How many sequels do we need at this point? I don't really want to watch the same movie all the time, because the reason they make different movies is because the old ones have already been made. So if I see one more motherfucking sequel, I'm gonna lose my mind. I wasn't a movie kid. It was the truth. I wasn't a movie kid. I didn't like movies as a kid, and I didn't for a long time until I started watching them when I got a little bit older. I did not like movies. And you know what? I have caught up on a lot of movies lately. I have watched a lot of movies that my friends wanted me to watch, and now they're putting out sequels for them, and I don't want to see any sequels for them. I feel like there was completely no reason to do so many sequels on everything. Let it die. Let it rest. And there's always the money factor, of course. But also, at some point, people are going to start catching on right? Some point people are going to understand that they are watching the same movie over and over and over again. No, the less is more thing is what I want to go with, and then I'm going to change the cat bed out for something taller. We need some height difference here, because I really do like the family photos. I think they're perfect. Everything is the same thing over and over again, and the mundaneness of all of that, it has to be getting boring. Oh my god, wait, wait, I'm going to move this back over here, okay? And you need to trust me, because I'm about to redo a bunch of my work. But there needs to be a computer desk here. I thought I was done. I thought I was done. No, this needs to be a computer desk because there was always the big old computer desk, the family computer. I need that. I need that. That is what's missing here. And it's not going to fix anything whatsoever. But the computer desk is important to me. It's important. No, that's the wrong color. It's important to society. It's societally important. That just blends in so weirdly. I don't like that. Ew. Ew. Is there, a, is there one that looks normal? Where's a big old juicy desk chair? Oh, a plushy nice desk chair, not one of those stupid little scrawny chairs. I'm not even gonna change the color. That was the color. Everybody was only able to get a black one. I need a big old chunky computer to go on top of there. That's what it was missing, and it's gonna be so much more cramped in here now. I think this is the, the chunkiest computer we got. I'm gonna have this like they just got out of their chair, right? You know what I mean? You get it? You get it? You understand? Okay, you know what? I honestly, I think this is perfect. I think this is a great liminal space. I feel good about it. Why do I keep clicking the wrong button? I feel good about how this looks. It's really cramped, but I like it, okay? I'm a fan of how this looks. I'm a big fan. Hornsby, I hope you love this. I hope you love this. I hope this gives you nightmares. I hope this makes you feel awful. It was good to take a little break from the scene era, but still kind of stay in the same graft of time, I guess. It's ready. Hey, I got a silly question. If you had to give a name to the way you designed my place, what would it be? Hmm. Windows... Vista. Purple place era. Oh, I love it. Oh, I'm so excited for this. I feel like it's gonna make me feel nice, but also bad at the same time. We did it. We made it. We really did. I thought this was gonna go a lot worse. Thank you for helping me make this very interesting place. Thanks for hanging along with me. I really appreciate you a lot. And this was fun. This was fun. I enjoyed it. A lot of you don't need to pay me. I do my work for free. Okay, I give people trauma for free. Don't worry. What was your favorite liminal space picture you've ever seen? What is something that you can describe as that same feeling that's from your own house? I would love to know. I think like the best thing I can think of as like a liminal space from my own memories is sitting in like a really giant armchair that my grandparents have in a Halloween costume and I had blonde bangs because I'm naturally a light brown dirty blonde. Could have had a rosy anyway. And I was just sitting playing with a really cheap Barbie doll that looked nothing like the Barbie dolls you can get right now. And I remember that as like a liminal space, you know? That's pretty much the end of the video. I'll see you next time. Thank you to all my members. Stay safe. Stay wonderful. Goodbye. <laughs>